The online education space is a $200 billion industry. And during the pandemic, we have seen a rise in digital entrepreneurs who are helping provide massive income, massive impact to so many people. And we have seen a lot become eight and even nine figure entrepreneurs. Well, there's usually somebody behind them who's making all of the systems work. Today, we're gonna talk about that system and the person who has helped a lot of your online favorites get to the next level. Let's do it. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. I know you wanna watch this next video, but listen, if you are an entrepreneur, business coach, business consultant, or a small business owner who has a story and wants to learn how to create multiple streams of income from your story, I need you to text me right now. My book to 646-687-4152. That is my personal number. I have been an author for over 12 years. I've written 10 books. Four of them have been bestsellers, and I've sold over 100,000 books but I've also helped a lot of my clients take their expertise and put it into a story, then create multiple streams of income from that. So I wanna help you do the same thing. So text my book to 646-687-4152. I, I, let's go back to the video. Pay attention and listen, we about to teach class. Inside the boat, my man adds cash. So get your man right, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. You see him, you change your life. Millionaire mindset, the best on earth. All right, so welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Vault with Ash Cash, the greatest money mindset show on the planet where we help you live in abundance both spiritually, practically. We give you all the plays to create a five, six, seven. And in this particular case, we are gonna show you how to get to that eight figure business. We got my guy, Damian Watts in the building. When I tell you that you do not, I, like I mean this, you do not want to miss this episode. Stay to the very end because the game that's going to be dropped in this interview will literally, literally change your whole entire life, right? And what do I mean by that? Um, I know that, I mean, me personally, just being someone uh, who has written books, who has, you know, done, you know, financial education and been in the game for a very long time, uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people from a digital perspective just, just you know, go crazy online, uh, but, but, you know, become multi-millionaires in a short period of time. And when you think about the engine that is behind them, most likely, Damian Watts' name is going to pop up. And so this man is going to change your whole entire life. My guy, Damian Watts is in the building. What's up, brother? What's good? What's good? How you doing? I'm doing well, brother. I appreciate you, man. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy uh, that we're having this interview, right? And, you know, full, full disclosure, uh, you know, Damian uh, is the man that is helping me, like, as we speak, uh, you know, scale my business, uh, take it to the next level. You know, I've uh, always been a, a, a top earner, if you will, um, as it relates to, you know, selling books, digital courses, things of that nature. Uh, but when, you know, I was introduced, uh, you know, to, to Damien um, and hearing all of the, uh, the, the people that he's helped uh, make multi millions of dollars, I was like, yo, I got to tap in with this guy, right? If you go, if you want to go fast, you know, go alone. If you want to go far go together um and so you know i you know i think it's it, it's an honor to even have you uh you know inside the vault right behind right. you know what i mean because normally you're behind the scenes uh but now we, we put you front and center uh, but before we get into to all of the awesome things that you've done um for those who don't know who is damian watts oh man i'm a country boy at heart man i'm from a small town in Arkansas, yeah, small town in Arkansas, man. Prescott, Arkansas, uh, probably population of maybe 30,000. Wow. So uh, that's, that's me at heart, man. So, you know, I, I kind of got into the game by luck, honestly. Played a little college ball, uh, you know, it, down there in Arkansas, in central Arkansas. And from there, got a job out here in Dallas um, doing a business analyst. Yeah. 
So worked for a toll company, so I was already pretty good with numbers, yeah. right? So with that, after nine months, just wasn't a good fit. And then I got into the digital online space through a course, mm. right? Ty Lopez, so shout out to Ty Lopez, yeah. man. I saw, saw the program back in like uh, the end of 2015. Yeah. And then from there, just off to the races. Wow, wow. And so let me, let me, read, some, let me read some stats, right? You know, former athlete turned serial entrepreneur, right? Damien has now become one of the top omni-channel experts specializing in helping e-commerce brands, coaches, consultants, and service providers scale their brand to multiple eight figures a year. You've helped 48 entrepreneurs scale to seven figures per year from scratch. So 48 people that you've worked with started with zero and scaled to seven figures, right? Uh, you've helped 68 business owners generate multiple six-figure months. And these are all separate. Right. Six-figure months. And finally, have helped several brands reach eight figures per year, right? And so when you think about, um, you know, I'll name drop, you know, you know a Neo, uh, him 500, um, Wall Street trappers, people that you work with personally who've helped like really scale their business. Um, you know, Fabiana Fa Farrarini, uh, hopefully I didn't top up her name, but like, like you've really, um, you know, been the, you know, you know, the, the person behind the scenes making sure that the work that they're doing is being seen by, by people. Talk a little bit about, um, you know, that, that work and, and how does somebody, like how do you help somebody go from scratch to seven figures? Man, honestly, it, all start, it always starts with the offer. Yeah. Right? The offer is the biggest thing and the biggest component. And then the next thing is going to be timing. Mm. Right? So back in early 2020, uh, through some referrals, right before the pandemic, right, is when I got introduced to Neo, Him500, Joshua Chris, all of these guys, right? Yeah. You can look them up online. And they were pretty much, they were making some money online. Yeah. Nothing significant though, right? And once they, all they needed was an engine, uh -huh. right? The engine, I had already been behind a few nine-figure brands, uh -huh. running the ads, doing the things that we do on our end. And they were missing just a couple of pieces to take them to the next level, wow. right? So I'll use Him500 for a perfect example. The first month he came in, I think we did like 45,000 the first month and then nine months into it, we're already a million dollars a month, Wow! right? So what happened was is with the pandemic and, and again, the offer, right? It all came down to the offer and then timing, he came up with the name Recession Proof, uh -huh. right? So we were already going into what we thought was gonna be a recession with the pandemic. Obviously people losing jobs, things, just all types of crazy stuff happening. And when I speak on offer, it's, it's so relevant, right? I look at Him500 as a unicorn story. Mm -hmm. He's a unicorn story because typically whenever you're running offers online, you can't run straight to what we call a checkout page. Mm -hmm. So we have a sales page and a checkout page. You, can't, you typically can't go straight there at the price point that he was charging, yeah. right? So he was charging $5,000 to get into his program. And when, when I looked at that situation, I saw something that could be big because he was in the credit space, yeah. right? It's a huge industry, tons of people need help with their credit. But when he made a switch in his offer and changed from being a credit person to a businessman, mm. right? That's when we started to see the magic happen, yeah. right? Yeah. Million dollar months. And then the even crazier part, he was the first person that we were able to take to a million dollars in a day, Wow. right? So. That's what I would say when it comes down to, you know, when I'm looking at the different situations, Neo, the same thing. It all came down to offer. He was doing event spaces at the time, still does it to this day. But he, when he switched the offer, million dollar months. Mm. Right. So it all comes down to offer. And then, like I said, Tommy. Yeah. 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 And, and so like like what, what is what is the thing? Right. Because you said offer timing. Um, can anybody who's in the digital space uh, become a seven figure earner? I absolutely believe so. It all, and again, offer a foundation, right? The foundation is going to be super important that we're talking about here. That foundation is making sure that you have what we call a front end and what, you, and what we call a back end. Those are the two most important pieces in, in this digital game. And most people now, like I mentioned to you earlier, we work with non-figure brands. Yeah. There's, there's a misconception when it comes to spending money online. The non-figure brand owners, what they do is is they, they try to lose money on the front end, mm. which most people don't want to lose any money on the front end, right? Mm. They want to make money and be profitable. Yeah. So I took some of these same concepts and brought it over into the black community, mm. right? And the, the good thing is, again, 
I say offer, but timing, uh -huh. right? The timing was just so perfect. People were behind the computers, they're at home, they're stuck, all of these things. It was, it was like a perfect storm. So what would happen, so what happened is, is once I took those same components and added them into here, like a lot of these guys, they were missing email support, uh -huh. SMS support, upsells, downsells, all of these components that make a solid business a sustainable, uh -huh. right? So once we implemented and executed those things into their businesses, Man, things just, they just, they just took off. Like, when I say they took off, it was so fast that I couldn't even keep up. Wow. Right? So, when you talk about scaling your business, helping these individuals, and at that time, I probably had a team of five people uh -huh. managing 40 brands at the same time, wow. all doing six, seven figure months. Yeah. So, we ran into an issue when it, it came to human capital, uh -huh. right? So, having team members that can, live up to my standards as well as deliver the results that I know I can deliver. Yeah. So those things were the things that we need to make sure that we had in place in order to keep up with the growth because it was happening so fast. Once HIM 500 hit the million dollars a month, Neo came next. Then Neo hit $2 million days. Mm. Joshua came next. Mm. He hit the million dollar a month. So it was just, it was happening so fast that, you know, we had to figure out ways to keep up with what they were doing and keep it in place. Wow, wow. And so, you know, right right now there's there's an entrepreneur um, who is like co you know, coasting or comfortable, you know, you know, hitting the fifty thousand, you know, fifty fifty thousand a month, right? They they're doing good. Um, what's the difference between um, someone who is doing fifty thousand a month and somebody who's doing seven figures or, you know, eight figures? The biggest difference that I see when, when people typically come in is if they're doing $50,000 a month, it's two things. One, they're scared to spend money, spend mm, more money. Yeah. And then number two, they don't have the solid foundation that I mentioned in the beginning. Yeah. So a lot of people that come to us, they're already making money organically, yeah. right? So they have, they typically, a lot of people are still on Gumroad, which I, I don't understand how they're still on there, yeah. uh, and they make the bread. So a lot of people are on Gumroad. And the what's big, Gumroad? What's Gumroad that? is just another software that you can use to sell things through, yeah. right? So you got Kajabi, you have Teachable, Thinkific, all of these different platforms where you can host your course, program, eBooks, things of that nature. Yeah. So when it comes to the $50,000 a month people, most of them are not spending enough, they're not creating enough content. Mm. They're, they don't have a follow-up system with abandoned cart sequences and mm. things of that nature, and they're not sending a, enough SMS messages. Mm. So when we take that structure and implement it into their businesses, perfect example, I had a company that came to us called Wig Dealer, mm. right? They sell wigs, obviously, but they were doing maybe, and I know you mentioned $50,000 a month, but they were doing like 500K a month. Mm -hmm. They did not have anything in place, wow. just selling wigs, right? Yeah. Really good quality. When we implemented SMS, a five-step abandoned cart sequence and increase the frequency at which we were sending the emails. Mm. So she was sending maybe two emails per month. We increased it to three times per week. Mm. Every single email that we were sending out was getting five to ten thousand mm. dollars. Right. So as you can see, that's already a micro shift in what she was doing. That first month we took over, we took her from five hundred to seven hundred and fifty-five thousand. Mm. That very next month we went to one million. Mm. The next one point five. Mm. We made it all the way up to two point seven before we ran into inventory issues, mm. which is another whole topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. What of us it? What of us it? So yeah. that fifty thousand dollar a month person, if they go and execute and make sure that they have a proper back end. They make sure that their offer is solid, then they can get to a hundred thousand six figures easy. Yeah, and you said you said something earlier about like, um, you know, this being you know you know when you think about the culture, you think about the black community. Uh, this is not necessarily, um, you know, this is new for us, right? Um, and so for, for for somebody you know in the culture who um, is already you know making money, what's you know you know what's the biggest misconception that people have uh, as it relates to, as it relates to running ads, and why are running ads so important? Man, I can tell you right now, the biggest misconception is ads are the magic pill, mm. right? Yeah. Ads are not the magic pill. Yeah. They just give you more visibility, they give you more exposure, more brand awareness, and obviously you can make more money, yeah. but. That that con that misconception of I can go, not have a good offer and just put some money behind it. Mm. That's where people get screwed. Yeah. And we have a lot of people that come through our brand that don't have good offers, and they're coming straight from organic and say, okay, well, if I'm making a hundred thousand dollars organically, you should be able to make two hundred thousand dollars with paid ads. Yeah. But that's not the that's not the right way to look at it. Yeah. Right? Because again. When you're looking at your organic side of things, that's a warm audience. Uh -huh. They're used to listening to your voice. They're used to 
being around you, hearing how you're pitching things, and they're used to what it is that you have to sell. Yeah. Whenever you talk about paid ads, you're going out there a cold audience. These people have no clue who you are, right? So you have to work on your messaging, you have to work on your offer, it's positioning. There's a, a entirely different script that you have to put in place in order to hit those types of numbers online. And that's the biggest misconception is they think that they can just put some money, run some ads, and that's gonna flip their business when it, that's the last thing that's gonna happen. Why you work so hard? Cause I'm trying to get some money, punk. Man, why you keep calling these people? Cause I'm trying to get what I deserve. If you haven't wrote down your goals, if you never envision it, it will never happen. So if you haven't wrote down your goals, you need to manifest that and speak into existence because the Bible says, speak those things that are not as though they are. Everything that you've ever wanted, everything that you've ever desired, any dream, any aspiration, all of it is now going to take shape. You know the importance of keeping your job because your job is your first business partner. Wall Street looks like us now. It's a battle cry. Wall Street looks like us now. It's the equalizer. If you can start training your brain to start thinking about solutions to problems and challenges rather than letting them slow you down, you are going to dominate this life. And when I learned that selling is not about convincing people to do something they don't want to do. Selling is about empowering people and freeing people from their inhibitions so that they can do something they already desire to do. I tried too much to settle. I prayed too long to settle. I fought through too much to settle. I didn't make it through COVID to settle. I'm ready to step into everything that God's got for me. Wow, wow. And so, and so, Break down some plays for me, right? So like, you know, if somebody is selling um, physical products, webinars, high ticket, um, like, what, like what are the tools um, that is necessary for people to win online? Got it, so we'll start with physical products. That's, that's, that's where I started out in the game. Uh, got a lot of exposure to, again, I mentioned a couple of non-figure brands. They were doing some pretty big numbers uh, as we were spending millions a month. Right. So the biggest thing when it comes to when it comes to the e-commerce space is platforms. Right. I typically tell people to stay away from WooCommerce, mm -hmm. um, WordPress and things like that. Just go with Shopify. Shopify is the easiest platform where you can sell your physical products. Um, when it comes to that back end support, like I mentioned earlier, I love Clavio. Clavio, however you say the name, that's mm -hmm. your email marketing support. Mm -hmm. uh, it gives you the easiest capabilities to design emails and send them out and automate things, which is another portion of the grand scheme is. Yeah, you can have a person manually pushing these buttons, but you want to have some automations in place to capture these leads and to follow up with these leads. The next thing that you want to make sure you have with a Shopify standpoint is we typically bounce back and forth between attentive mobile or postscript when it comes to the SMS, but making sure that you have those SMS pieces in place. Again, you want to follow up with the people and you also want to nurture them while also going after the revenue and sending out what we call broadcasts. So that's just blasting and so SMS, together. for those who may not know, mm -hmm. is text messages. Yeah, SMS, yeah. Um, I don't even know the, the term for, yeah, the, yeah, for yeah. the abbreviation, but yeah, SMS is just text messages. Okay. okay. So when it comes to the Shopify game, again, when you're looking at the website where people when we take on a brand where they mess up, they're sending it directly to the homepage, uh. right? So they wanna show off the brand and do those types of things, but we typically send people to either a collection or that individual product. Uh. So when we scale brands online and you look at how we structure our, our campaigns within our accounts, let's just say you have 100 SKUs, we'll have 100 different campaigns for uh. each individual one of those SKUs uh. so that we can have a specific message going to a specific interest or what we call look-alike audiences online, we'll have it going to that separately with a specific message. For example, you got that hoodie on, right? I would have a hoodie campaign versus a hoodie and a sweatsuit campaign. Mm -hmm. I would separate those products yeah. so that we can have the right message to the right market so that we can push that out to the people. So that's a little gems around the e-commerce space, but webinars and all those other types of uh, info, product, info product campaigns, the webinar space is, is popping right now, right? People are getting online um, and selling things through webinars. Mostly they sell courses or hot ticket programs. Uh -huh. So we like to go back and forth between webinars, which is something where you get on, tip, people typically go for about an hour yeah. uh, on a webinar. And I like to, my, my all time favorite, which we've done over $200 million through this type of funnel is a video sales letter funnel or uh -huh. VSL funnel. Right? So we have a typical opt-in page where we're coming to collect their information and giving them a, a pre-frame of what, what is it they're about to learn. And then we take them to the 
video sales letter page. And on that video sales letter page, just a couple of game, a couple of gems for you guys is you want to make sure that you have social proof. Mm -hmm. So that's just testimonials, um, just social proof around the fact of what it is that you're trying to teach. So let's just say we have a, a trucking automation client that just came through not too long ago. He didn't have these things in place. Once we put the social proof on the page, we added a bio um, and a couple more things to help with the conversion rates through the roof. He sells a $75,000 package. And with that video, we typically like those videos to be anywhere between eight minutes and 30 minutes. Uh. So your typical webinar is about an hour long. With these video sales letters, we want those to be short, concise, to the point, so that we can either, two steps. You either want to take them to an application where we can filter people out, or we want to take them directly to a book a call, uh. right? And that application, just a little hack, if they don't qualify, most people use, especially when you're talking about funding, most people use what we call a filtering system, uh -huh. right? So we typically in funding, it's gonna come down to credit or how much revenue you're already making, right? So typically, let's just say, if you choose below a 650, we'll filter them out and they don't even make it to book a call. Uh -huh. So we filter those people out, but most people, even then, we get people that come in and they filter them out and then they're just gone. Uh -huh. We filter them out to a product. Uh -huh. Say, hey, look, you can't afford this or you don't right. qualify for this, but you can at least get this course. Uh, you can at least get this ebook. You yeah. can get something. So that's that's typically what we like to do yeah. when it comes to the webinars and the actual VSLs. Yeah, yeah. And so and so and, and I and I love that because again, you know, I mean, if y'all didn't pick up on that game, that game is really important because that happens uh, you know, anywhere else you go, right? You go uh, to Amazon, you know, they have a funnel. You go to the car dealership, there's a funnel. If you don't qualify, they're, they're leading you other places. Uh, you know, you, you name it, any any place that you go uh, that's functioning on a high level has, you know, has that level of, uh, you know, flow, if you will. Um, you call yourself the omni-channel king. What is omni-channel? Man, I get that question all the time. So omni-channel is simply being able to maximize your visibility online, Yeah. right? What we have is in our industry are what we call specialists, mm -hmm. either a Facebook specialist, a email marketing specialist, YouTube specialist. I can do it all, mm. right? So that's why I call myself the omni-channel king. I can go and set up a campaign on each one of those individual platforms mm. and maximize the visibility of your brand, mm. right? And that's something that we're doing right now for, for Neo, right? Neo's like, I wanna be everywhere. Mm -hmm. Put me everywhere. I wanna make sure that I'm making money. I want people to see me all online, right? Yeah. So with that omni-channel, what we call omni-channel presence, again, I'm gonna make sure you're on TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, Google. Google has like four subsets. Google search, Google shopping, Google display, and YouTube, which is that su other subset, and then Facebook and Instagram. Mm. That's the front facing, right? Where the people yeah. can actually see. But yeah. then you have the email and the SMS on the back end, and that's what you call omni-channel. Yeah, yeah, no, I love it. And then so, um, you know, you have partnered Right. With, you know, you, 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 you've created a business called uh, Obsidian. Right. And you've partnered, uh, you know, you, you call it the four headed monster. Um, what was the reason uh, for, you know, joining forces with other with three um, different business owners when, um, you know, you, you, you know, you guys were all making money together separately. You know, what was the reason for forming Obsidian? Man, and what is Obsidian? Too? Okay, gotcha. So yeah, yeah. Obsidian, um, it's a little bit of a different model than we're all used to when it comes to your typical digital marketing firm, yeah. right? People come, they pay, they get a result, and then that's the firm. Obsidian is more of a domination play, mm. right? So what I did was I reached out to the top guys in the industry, black guys, right? So that we can build something that hasn't been done in our community. Mm. So I reached out to a guy, his name is Tommy Powers. He was the first person that I reached out to. He's, we call him the YouTube goat. Mm. Anybody running something online came from him mm. when it comes to YouTube ads. Yeah. And my other partners, Sam Bell and, Tom, uh, and Aaron Ball, Aaron is a webinar guy. He's the guy that you want to go to whenever you're looking to get your webinar either off the ground or optimize your webinar, and he's going to get you off to the races. Uh -huh. Sam, what we call the social ads engineer, he's more of a, I, I like to call him a business development strategy, and he can also kill you with the automations, mm. right? So what we've created, and then obviously Omni Channel King, we created this four-headed monster that we can do any and everything within this one subset. Mm. Because what, what typically happens is whenever you're looking for someone online, 
you got to go to multiple places. The team may not be able to do video. This team may not be good at SMS. They may only be Facebook. They may only be YouTube. So we said, all right, screw it. Even though I know how to do all these things and I do them very well, I'm not the best at YouTube. I'm not the best at webinars. I'm not the best at TikTok, right? But I can still bust down some bread. And whenever you're looking at the grand scheme, if we all can stay in our own individual lanes, what happens? We become more powerful because we get to focus on that one subset that we are all the best at, right? So Tommy's YouTube, I don't have to touch YouTube anymore because he's, his processes, they do everything that we need to do to maximize the visibility on that channel. Mm -hmm. Aaron, I don't have to touch webinars anymore because he's going to get the webinar right and then we can pump the bread behind it for scaling because that's the biggest thing in this game is people, anyone can run ads. So I want to definitely just throw it out there. I got people in the Philippines that can run ads. I could teach my sister how to run ads. It's just pressing buttons. Uh -huh. And I want to go back to that misconception. We are not ad people. Uh -huh. We know how to run ads. We're not, we're not ad people. We are business strategists, uh -huh. right? So we, when it comes to your funnels, when it comes to the emails, how to position yourself, the actual ads, what are you saying, what are you saying in those ads? Those are the things that people overlook. Uh -huh. And that's something that when it comes to ad buying, media buying, those terms, all it is is running ads, right? Uh -huh. We want to make sure that that misconception is, because that's the, that's the first thing that I hear, yeah. him 500, hey, that's my ads guy. That's the guy that runs the ads. That's true, right. but at the same time, we create your offers. We create this ecosystem that allows you to hit the seven and eight figures. Yeah. Because without that, without that foundation, you're not gonna hit seven figures. You can't just run ads and hit seven figures. There's yeah. a lot of pieces that go inside of that, all of those variables. Yeah, and so, you know, um and I, you know, I, I, lo I love that. Like, like th there's pieces that run into that variable. Um, someone just starting out, right, um, is 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 looking like how how fast does it take, right, from from scratch, right? Because we get a lot of people who you know have nine to fives um, who are looking to start a business, right, um, and they and you know they are uh, you know wanting to hit the ground running. Um, you know, how long from the time of inception, for like they didn't start the business yet, they're still trying to figure it out. How long from the time of inception to, uh, you know, d does it take for them to, you know, scale to that seven, that eight figures? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, okay, let's start, let's start here. I can't put a time behind that because there's a lot of different factors that goes into hitting seven figures a year, mm. right? Offer what we always talk about, right? It comes down to the offer and what it is and price point, mm. right? So those are the two factors that I look at whenever someone says, because we get it all the time, I want to get to seven figures, whatever you did for them, do it for me. Yeah. It's not the case, right? It's, it's not, a, it's, again, ads aren't a magic pill, mm -hmm. right? So if someone's looking to come from scratch and hit a seven figures in a year, you need a good product, you need to make sure that that product hits a niche, mm -hmm. a, a market that you can serve to. So we look at everything, um, there, there's phases in the awareness. Right. And it depends on where you are in the awareness funnel that that can kind of dictate uh, the results at the end of the day. Him 500, perfect example. When he came to us, he fit within the solution aware, mm -hmm. like they know that they needed to fix their credit. Yeah. Right. They had the problem aware and the solution aware awareness stage. So it depends on where you're where you're trying to put that into that awareness funnel. Mm -hmm. Right. So let's just say a person has started from scratch. If they're starting from scratch, what I would first do whenever they come into the business is, OK, let's let's look at your offer. What it is that you're trying to sell and what is the price point that you're trying to sell it at? OK, they come in at ninety seven dollars. They want to do an ebook because when you say from inception, what is it? Right. Is it an ebook? Is it a course? Is it a mastermind? Is you know, what is it? Is it a, is it a physical product? That's where I start. We got to get the offer right first. And we got to make sure that there's a market to, to match it to. Mm. So once we get that, typically if the offer is really good, you have a good price point, you get the reviews, you get the social proof, and you take care of what we call the community. You got to have the community right. to back it, right? The fastest that I've seen it happen, nine months. Mm. The longest I've seen it happen, two years. Mm. Yeah. All right. So from inception, um, and, and and so like, what type of um, you know, you know, you know, uh, mindset or person does um, this person starting the business have to be in? Let me let me let me kind of expound, right? Because uh, you know, I know Neo personally. 
Um, I know him 500 personally. Um, and they both have a characteristic where um, they're not necessarily relying on people for their success, right? Uh, these are people who are uh, go-getters. Um, they, they always got their foot on the gas. They're always going. Um, and so while, um, you know, there's different parts of, um, you know, you know, their um, business, if you will, or their team that helps their business go. But, 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 but when you look at them, um, there's a certain characteristic that they both have in common. And so what would you say, um, is that characteristic? And from your experience, you know, you know, what has allowed you to help so many businesses? Because I'm, I'm saying those two because those are the two I know, right? But when you got numbers like 48, like you, you've helped 48 businesses, uh, you know, scale to, to, to seven figures. When you, when you talk about 68, you know, people uh, do, you know, uh, six figure months, right? Like, what is that characteristic? What makes a great client for you? And what, like, what is something when you see that person, you're like, oh, yeah, I can help this person. I can, I can help them get to that next level. Killer. Yeah. They some killers. Mm. Like, not like physically, but yeah. like the, the, the mindset is I want to dominate. I want to do, I want to help people to impact, right? Yeah. So I, I like the genu uh, authentic person. Yeah. Yeah. I like a person that has a killer mindset that if you got to step on some toes and get people out of the way, yeah. that's what you do. Yeah. Um, and, then the, and then the third one, honestly, it's being humble, uh, right? So yeah. being able to sit back, even though you got strategies and things you want to implement, yeah. sit back and take the advice from an expert, uh, someone who has been in the trenches, who spends millions of dollars per month, being able to be humble and say, okay, I'm going to listen to what you got to say. Yeah. I may not agree with it, but we're going to test it because in our world, we just split test. Yeah. So split test is we put A and B side by side and yeah. see which one works, yeah. right? So that's typically the three components that I see from the people who are doing seven, eight figures. They're, yeah. they're killers. They're humble, yeah. and then they're they're authentic to their message. They're yeah. authentic to themselves. Yeah, yeah, and and, and de definitely that's the, that's the hooper of you, right? That's that's right. That's looking for that killer. And you know, I would say that though, right? So like like I said, like I like I I'll you know full disclosure, like you my guy as well. Um, and I think that was the one of the uh, I won't say toughest, but it was for me what I wasn't used to, right? Where when we started working together. Um, you know, I start, you know, put like, like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a numbers guy. And so in the banking world, I put a certain amount of money out and I, you know, I expect to know how much money is coming back in. You and I start working together. We, we dumping some money out and I'm like, yo, what's happening? What's happening? And you like, yo, Ash, trust me. I got you. Like, yo, we gotta, um, you know, put the money out there. We gotta, uh, test the market. We gotta learn. Um, and you know, I'll, you know, you know, Put it out there ahead of time so I can put the pressure on you. But we're working on a, on on a particular product from scratch that we will scale to seven figures this year. Um, and uh, but that the only reason that that has happened or will happen um, is because we started to. Um, we put a lot of money up up front, right? Where we were testing some things, we we're figuring some things out. Um, now we're at a space. We have enough data. Uh, we know what's going to work. We know um, with the audience. We know who takes the offer, who doesn't take the offer. Um, and so, so some of the the things that made me cringe in the beginning um, are actually those things that um, are going to. I mean, you know, dare I say eight figures? But you know, but <laughs> but 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 these are the things that that kind of um, going to get, you know, you know, create that success. And so um, expound a little bit on that, right? You touched on it a little bit, but expound on, um, you know, Myron says it all the time, right? Like amateurs, you know, you know, you know, uh, make their money up front. You know, professionals make their money on the back end. Um, you know, you know, expound on why, like, why is it important um, to test? Why is it important to, uh, to know your customer? Like, what, why is it, why is the offer so, so important? Man, honestly, when you, when, you, when you look at our situation, right, yeah. the reason that we had to come back, come to the drawing board, figure out how we want to put the message out, right? Yeah. And again, typically what happens is, is when people come into the industry, they already have some things that are working or they don't have some things that's working, right? But just because it's working organically does not mean it's going to work with paid. Mm. Again, it's a warm audience versus a cold audience. Yeah. So again, what we like to do on the front is we like to spend money to gather data. Yeah. And that's the biggest thing that, again, apart back to that misconception, 
spending the money on the front end. We have people that come in all the time that say, hey, look, I just spent $1,000 and I haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. We say, it's all right. Yeah. We got you, yeah. right? Just sit back, relax. We got you. Yeah. Because we're gathering information. This information, this intel, like, for example, if I go into the back end of Facebook and I, I spend $1,000 on a few audiences, what, what, what is that going to tell me? It's going to tell me who's clicking on the ads, yeah. what age range, where are they at? Uh, are they gender, you know, gender, male or female? I get to gather all of this information and say, okay, based on this information, these people are the most likely to engage. These are the most people that are likely buy our products. So that's why we spend the money on the front end so that we can get, gather this information. So I look at it as not throwing it away, mm -hmm. but we're buying information that's yeah. going to help you in the long run. Yeah. And then you have the algorithms, right? The algorithms, they do their own thing. They're getting very smart. And what we had happened during the pandemic is what we call iOS 14, 15, uh -huh. right? Those are where Apple played gangster, pulled the plug yeah, on, yeah, on yeah. Facebook, so now we didn't have ac access to those data points, right? So when you look at the grand scheme of trying to get something to convert online, it really comes down, like when we talk about the actual offer itself, that offer is key because if you have the offer and it fits a solution to somebody's problem, they're gonna buy, yeah. right? I, I, I think I heard Myron speak on that, you know, about prospecting, mm. right? We're really not prospecting. We're putting something in front of a person that they already want it, right? right? We just gotta put it in front of them and hit them with the right message and then obviously price point and all those other things matter. The other thing is the buyer's journey, mm -hmm. right? Some of the things that we see that is wrong within the space, especially when it comes to the course space. And just so everyone is aware, the course space is still alive, it's mm -hmm. not dead, yeah. but course completion rate is at an all time low. Yeah. Why? Because people are so transactional on the front end. Mm -hmm. Again, back to the front end, people make money on the back end. You wanna make money with your courses, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a community associated with that course, it's not gonna be scalable. Mm -hmm. Maybe back in 2016, 2018, mm -hmm. that time frame, courses was flying off the roof, mm -hmm. right? But when it comes to the course game, people have to understand that if you don't figure out ways, we typically use gamification. Mm -hmm. Gamification is a simple process where we're trying to incentivize someone to complete the next step, yeah. right? So I've seen situations where people offer money back, yeah. people offer other products. You have to figure out a way to get people to finish the courses. Yeah. That's number one. Because if you don't, then your success rate is going to be low, yeah. right? So you want to make sure that you fix that on the front end. When they actually buy your product, you want to make sure that they're actually completing. Yeah. So what we're doing right now is we're switching up the whole game. We're starting with community, and then we're selling the rest of the products from the community. Mm. Because you already built the trust, you're nurtured, people already have paid mm -hmm. on the front end. Yeah. And in our world, and this is the, the other game that the nine-figure companies play, mm -hmm. It's a term called lifetime value. We, we just call it LTV. Mm -hmm. These people understand that once, it's easier to sell to someone who has already bought from you yeah. versus trying to get them on the front end, mm -hmm. right? So that's how you increase that lifetime value of that customer. Like Myron says, make more offers. Yep. We, and that's why we have different strategies and I can get into those, uh, but the strategies on the front end, we wanna get as many people in the pipeline as possible, mm -hmm. which is why I don't care if we lose money on the front end mm -hmm. because I know that we got a client right now he spends about $700,000 a month mm. and he loses $100,000 every single month on the front end. Wow. Who does that? Wow. Right? Yeah. But what happens? They come in on the front end at a $7 or a $97 value. We lose on the front end. I think our target acquisition is 150 bucks. So we mm. can spend 150 bucks for a $97 product. So we're already losing. Wow. Right? But what happens is, is as soon as they get into the ecosystem, they're upsold. Mm. Boom. Five hundred dollars. Now we're back at above break even, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it ends. I think his average order value is like twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. So we're getting people for seven ninety seven dollars, and they're ending up spending twenty five hundred. So now we're able to outspend the competition, mm -hmm. which knocks them out the way out of the market. Mm -hmm. And again, whoever can spend the most to acquire a customer wins. Wow, wow. Oh, I don't know if y'all picking up all this major game that he's dropping. Uh, one one thing that. Um, you said that <clears throat> the courses are not dead, um, and I know a strategy that we, you know, we actually worked on together, where um, you know I had I had my courses at a certain price point, um, and you know, you know, in the beginning they were hitting, uh, but then they, you know, there became a decline. We we were seeing some numbers, um, and we had to. 
um, you know, change my price point. Um, and then we started seeing some sales again, right? And so like, why is it important? Like, like a lot of people kind of uh, treat their business like set it and forget it. Uh, why is it important to, to, you know, always be testing, always be looking at data, always, you know, make sure that, that there's a connection between, you know, the, the consumer buying behavior and the products and services that you're offering? Because, man, if, if you're not always testing and matching the market as it's always evolving, mm -hmm. you're going to lose. Yeah. At the end of the day, I've seen so many businesses back in 2017 that sold courses that did all these things. They're no longer around. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they didn't change with the, yeah. with the, with the times. Yeah. Right. So with that being said, you know, when it comes down to making those changes and always be testing, ABT is what we call it, mm -hmm. always be testing. Like if you get stagnant in your business and you just try to do the set and forget, what I've seen is businesses that aren't growing, they're dying, mm, right? Yeah. So with that, with that concept, what we like to do on our end is, as we're in the space heavily, right? We're always looking at different ways that we can add in. And so, and so, and so, so why is it important that, you know, I know with, with, with our particular strategy, um, you know, we had to, you know, really uh, cut back on prices and figure out what's, you know, what's working um, from a price perspective. Uh, why is that important? Yeah, so when it comes down to the price, we always like to split test those prices because, again, we want to make sure that it fits the market. And right now, and this is the really sucky part, you got the wrong people teaching the information. Mm. And this is why a part of that Obsidian play is we want to come in and do a market correction mm. because what's happening is most people are teaching, hey, you need to sell your course for $19.97. Yeah. Right? It's like the magic number that most people typically put it at. Yeah. And what we see is that don't last long. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, they go down to the price point of 9.97. Mm -hmm. And then that'll work for a little bit, and then it'll slow down, and then they end up going down to five, six, six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we like to split test on the front end because I'm what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to bring this nine-figure scheme into the community, right? Mm -hmm. So with that, I understand that, okay, let, we can lower this down. We just want to get as many people into the pipeline as possible, yeah. right? And, you know, people don't understand that on the front end, so it makes it a little difficult, but that's why we're creating all of these solutions on the back end so that we can help educate yeah. the community, right? Yeah. Because that's the, that's the number one thing that we see. Some people don't know what a pixel is. Yeah. Some people don't know what a funnel is. Mm -hmm. They don't know what media buying is. Mm -hmm. And whenever they're getting into this space, they're easily getting finessed, mm. right? So we, what we're trying to do now is we're creating these solutions so that we can help the community at a maximum capabilities, right? And I'm a one individual, that's why we created Obsidian, so that we can tag team on all of these plays, yeah. right? So when it comes down to that split testing on the price points and things of that nature, you just always wanna be doing that. We split test funnels, we split test headlines in your emails, we split test the copy, we split test button colors. All of these things are always being tested so that we can increase the conversion rates because the slightest increase in your conversion rate can result in hundreds of thousands of dollars. We have this company actually, Actively Black. Mm -hmm. It's an e-commerce brand. We made one switch in their brand when it comes to conversion rate. Mm -hmm. They had a process where they would go home page, collection, product, add to cart page, mm -hmm. and then go to the actual checkout. We took out that add to cart page because it was too many steps. Mm -hmm. We added a slide out add to cart when they pressed the button, and that increased the conversion rate by 1.6%. Mm -hmm. Right. With that slight increase in conversion rate, we went from two hundred thousand dollars a month to five hundred thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. And again, that wouldn't happen if we weren't testing. Yeah. So we put it side by side. So it's you always got to be testing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and, I, and I love that. And and, and you know, I, I love how you talk about, um, you know, helping the community. Right. Because I mean, to, to be honest, um, you know, I'm fortunate, right, to have to be to be able to work with you uh, because it wasn't like you did an ad or, you know, like and, and you don't really accept uh, clients, you know, you know, what I'm saying from an open basis. Uh, it was a relationship that I had. Right. Fast out to Jason, uh, Mr. Two Weeks Out, who, uh, you know, made the introduction. You and I got on the phone. You know, we, we kind of talk and you were you were willing to work with me. Um, but when you think about. 
um, you know, you know, you know, the um, your ability and what you know, you can't work with everybody. Um, and so now you created this this solution um, that's going to going to going to help, uh, you know, the community uh, learn and how to scale. Right. And so, you know, quickly, if you could talk to us about, um, you know, you know, media buying unlock. Got it. So what media buying unlocked is, is simply we're going to start helping people with their ads, right? Since we don't accept everybody into our company because we have qualifications, right? We know our sweet spot. If you're making 30 to $50,000 a month, we gonna get you to six figures. Yeah. And if you have a good enough offer, I promise you we gonna get you to seven. Yeah. If it's a banging offer, we are gonna get you to eight, yeah. right? So we've seen the progress of zero to eight figures, yeah. right? So, that, so now what we've done is we've documented that entire process. With that process, now we can subset that process into the, into the different buyer buckets. Right, so we have the people who are just getting started. They want to make their first ten thousand dollars. We got some for you. Mm. People who go from ten to fifty, we got some for you, and, and so on. Right, but with Media Buying Unlocked, it's a it's a very special situation that we've created. We've been training these media buyers for a very long time. Number one, but typically with most what we call placement agencies, you, you need some help. You need to hire somebody, a VA. You go to a placement agency, and they'll hook you up. Right. What we found is there's a gap in that industry. So. We have ad, as essentially we've created what we what we're calling just a smaller agency, uh -huh. but you still get your own individual person. Uh -huh. When you come into a company like ours, what typically ends up happening is you have account managers, you have media buyers who are going to run your ads, but that account manager is managing multiple people, yeah. right? So then it looks like you're not being taken care of in the one-on-one -on -one help because the media buyers also manage multiple brands. Right. But with this media buying unlock situation, we're able to cater to that individual brand with our systems and processes, market research, which is huge that nobody talks about uh, campaign planning. What are we going to say in the messages? What are we going to do with this? What is the creative going to be around? So that strategy, all of these things that we're doing for these eight figure entrepreneurs, we're bringing it down to this level of people that are just getting started or maybe they already have something going. We're bringing it down to these people so that they can get their brands to that next level. And the media buying unlocked is, is the perfect solution to help with the masses because we have hundreds of media buyers at our disposal. And with the brands that are looking to get started because black entrepreneurship is on the rise, Absolutely, right? Yeah. It's, it's on the rise and we, and again, we can't help everyone. So with Media Buying Unlocked, the other great thing is as, we, as we're passing these people off, they're also inside what we call our winner circle. Mm. And this winner circle is we're training these media buyers and they're gonna be multifaceted media buyers. So most people say, hey, I just wanna run Facebook ads, I need a media buyer for Facebook ads. Okay, that's great, but guess what? He can also bust down TikTok mm. and Google ads for you too. So these, th this solution is the answer for getting people where they wanna go online. No, I love that. I love that. All right, we got a special offer for y'all uh, later, right? We're going to give our insiders the first opportunity to join media, uh, you know, buyers unlocked. Uh, but let's, let, let, let's, let's pivot real quick, right? So as, you know, somebody who... Uh, has, uh, you know, helped a lot of eight-figure uh, and nine-figure brands, entrepreneurs. I, I'm, I'm sure you've made a lot of money personally through, uh, you know, you know, having this information. Uh, what would you say is the um, most extravagant thing you've done with money so far? Extravagant? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm a pretty young cat, so when I bought my first crib. Yeah. So that was probably the most extravagant. I, I haven't been outside of the country. Yeah. Uh, I drive a nice whip, but yeah, yeah. when I bought the crib, that was that was it for me because back in, in that time, um, we were living in, a, I think, a three-bedroom house yeah. that we were renting. I had my first daughter, and then we got back door with twins, so oh. we needed a bigger crib. Wow. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, the most, you know, we had it built from scratch, and that was like, oh, that was it. Nice, nice. Love it. And then what would you say uh, is the most impactful thing you've done with money? Impactful? Mm. Invest into myself. Mm -hmm. That's probably the most impactful that I've done because now I've been able to, like when I look at a HIM 500, I look at a Neo and I look at their reach. Yeah. Me continuing to educate myself, help them mm. spread their message. So yeah. I would say investing in myself. No, I love that. I love that. And then what, what, what advice, you know, we're going to go to our, our, our lightning round, but what advice would you give to uh, the side hustler, right? The person who has the nine to five, uh, who, who also, you know, has that business. Uh, you know, what, what, what advice would you give that person to help them, you know, take their, their, their idea or their business to the next level? Get started. Mm. It's the same thing that I did. When I was working a nine to five, I was also, so building websites and building apps, yeah. right? So I'm like, oh crap, okay. I got the job, but I'm also making 
two hundred dollars here, five hundred dollars here. Like yeah. this, this feels a little bit more free. Mm -hmm. So if I wouldn't have got started, I wouldn't be here today. Wow. So I would just say get started, honestly. Yeah, yeah, love that. All right, we're gonna do a lightning round. Uh, you know, in our lightning round, we take banking terms uh, and then we flip them for us inside the vault because we're literally inside a vault, right? Um, and so term number one uh, is deposit slip, right? Uh, you go into the bank, you fill out the form, you put money uh, inside the bank, right, using a deposit slip. But for us, a deposit slip is a slip up, a money mistake, right? What would you say has been the biggest money mistake, the biggest deposit slip that you've, you've made so far in your journey? Ooh. Not having contracts in place. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> not having that—that that was probably the biggest thing for me, um, based on referrals. Mm. Not having a contract in place and yeah. not taking the time, investing into getting the paperwork and yeah. having it to present to make sure that it's all the you know the lines are dotted. That's probably the biggest the biggest slip up. Yeah. Ha, have, ha, has anybody? Because um, I know, I mean, it's my, you know, we ain't even hit what we need to hit yet, and I'm grateful for our relationship. Have you have you seen people who have uh, taken advantage, like meaning like, you know, you've helped them get to the next level and then they're like, all right, thank you, I'm gone, I'm, you know? Or, or it like, happens, right? Yeah. So as people level up, typically what happens is, is as they hit the eight, nine figures, yeah. they want more control, mm. right? So now that they can afford to have an in-house team, that typically is what happens whenever it comes to people leaving the situation got it right yeah, they, yeah. They, they elevate and, yeah. that, and that's fine it's it's, yeah. it's a thank you very much right. i appreciate you for paying me i appreciate you for helping me make this bread yeah and then we just go our separate ways but yeah. then it typically turns into more of like a consulting mm -hmm. situation right. because they bring in the in-house teams most of the time those in-house teams are not specialists right. right so they still have problems with scale but they still have more control yeah so we typically go into a consulting situation yeah no i love that love that all right term number two uh, is charge off right uh, you know, you borrow money from a bank, uh, the bank wants this money back, but if you don't pay it back, they try to get the money, but eventually like, you know what, you know, I'm gonna charge this off. Uh, but for us inside the vault, a charge off uh, is, uh, what type of people or mindsets did you have to charge off during your journey? Friends, mm. yeah, friends, the homies. Yeah. Uh, that, that was probably the biggest charge off for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, they wanna go party, club, do these types of things, and I was behind the computer. It was funny, because him 500 would always say, hey, you always working. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I had to charge that type of energy off because yeah. it helped me propel to the next level. Yeah, yeah, love that. Last but not least, ATM. Uh, you know, you use your, your debit card, you put the card in, uh, you ask, you know, the, 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 the automated teller machine for money back. Uh, you've dropped a lot of bars. I want everybody, look, as you are watching this, go back. Uh, if you really want to take your business to the next level, he gave you a lot of uh, practical things that you could use to take your business to the next level. But we want more. Right? Uh, ATM for us is another teachable moment. I need you to look in that camera, uh, give, a, give all insiders like one more gem, like something that's gonna change their life forever. Give us another teachable moment. Okay, for all my course educators out there, the biggest thing that you can do is have more offers. Mm -hmm. Put an ebook in place, make sure you got a course, make sure you have a community, and make sure you have a high ticket mastermind to cultivate all of these pieces. When you put all of those pieces together, this is the eight figure foundation. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. All right, cool, because it was funny, because as we were talking, we running a play. I was gonna, I was gonna talk about the play, but I ain't wanna put all the sauce out there, so. Yeah, you just gave it, you know what I'm saying? But not not the full, you know what I mean? Not the full, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gonna have to tap in to get the full thing or pay him. I don't know, but look, he ain't give you the full thing, but that's the that's the foundation, right? That's the foundation. Um, all right, special offer, right? So so definitely uh, for those who wanna tap in uh, to media, you know, buyer unlock, uh, you know, as an insider, we're giving you first dibs to check it out. Uh, you can check it out at insidemediabuyer.com, um, inside media mediabuyer.com um, and just check it out see you know if, if you know there's a solution for everybody uh, and it, it'll help take your business to the next level um, if somebody wanted to connect with you they wanted to tap in with you where can they find you yeah just follow me on Instagram Damian Watts 9 I ain't got that many followers but y'all can help brother out <laughs> uh, but yeah that's, that's the best way to contact me just DM me yo my brother I appreciate all that you do man sure. 
Um, thank you, right, for coming Absolutely. from behind the computer uh, and, and blessing our insiders, man. Yo, it. make sure. Look, this is an awesome episode. Um, everybody, like, if you care about your friends, you care about your family, you care about the people that's in your community, make sure you send this uh, episode to them so they can learn um, about how to take their business to the next level. Make sure you visit us on our website, Inside the Vault Show. Dot com subscribe rate review get us to number one we are the number one financial literacy podcast on the planet and in order to make that manifest into real life we need you we need your help and it's free subscribe like uh, 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 you know review do all of the above uh, make sure you follow us on all social media platforms at inside the vault me I am ash cash make sure you visit me I am ash cash.com make sure you follow me on all social media platforms at I am Ash Cash. We are closing out the vault. Another awesome episode. I'm going to see you next time. Same time, same place in God's will. All right, y'all. Peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You won't ask cash. You can catch it right here in the vault.